Well, sales season's over now. I'm trying to recalibrate uh, heading into the burn. Uh, got the Christmas cups out, I see. I like that. Um, we had a good conversation with Jason last night about the horses coming in, the horses going out. You know, it's literally to that point where, okay, we have five coming this afternoon. We have three stalls. Uh, where are these other horses going to go? We have some horses that are going over to Ontario to train down. Leggy is going to join the Ontario staff over there. So is uh, we might send Dune over. They're looking for three horses to train down with James's horse. Um, Lifting Legend is going back. He's in Ontario, right? So he's going over to Ontario. Um, Simply Chaotic is there right now. That's the Trixton Colt. James, actually, I haven't seen the Trixton Colt yet. James told me the other day he actually likes him, the way he trots. He's really nice. Not surprising, I suppose. He's a pretty well-bred Colt and um, and certainly looked good on paper. James said he looks really nice on the track. And, of course, Dune, well, we are going to have... Um, we are going to have, uh, as I said, two or three horses uh, trained down in Ontario. Uh, the yearlings to start with. I know riding the rodeo. Somebody said, well, riding the rodeo is an obvious choice. Not really. There's some horses I want to have a look at also. When I look at Lifting Legend, the horse does nothing wrong. All he does is trot along nicely. Uh, James said the Trixton Colts, as I said, was good. And Dune is doing her work well now as the hobbles on his pacing. So she's an obvious choice to go over to. I guess not obvious. Not obvious. The obvious choice would be riding the rodeo. I just don't think she's ready yet to, uh, to go over. I want to have a look at her. I want to get the hobbles on her and get her pacing um, cleanly. And then we'll decide what we're going to do. So there's no certainties right now. We're just spitballing on, on how we're going to make uh, both barns work and how we're going to fill both barns up properly. Now, we also have some horses that are coming in. Some horses that could go out. I had floated the idea to Jason. Well, actually, that's not true. Jason had floated the idea to me last week, and I believe I floated it back to him um, about maybe giving Pelican Al a couple of weeks off. I know a lot of our clients are saying, when's he going to race? When's he going to race? It's been in 2-4. Right? And the the gap between 2, 4, and 58 is substantial. I want to make sure that he is ready to do his work best he can when we get him there. Now, he's there. 2, 4 is still racehorse speed, right? It can't win you a race, but those splits, those fractions are racehorse speeds. So, it's now just a matter of polishing them, pushing them, turning those fractions into faster fractions, and turning the horse into, the hopefully, a good horse at any point would be good. This is the time of year I always get emails um, from people also. Some people, I guess it's a two-way street. Some people happy with the way their horses have turned out in 2024 and talking about what will go on in 2025. And then you have the other side of that coin. People disappointed um, as to the way their horses turned out and what our plans are to, sh- to right the ship, so to speak, in 2025. A good conversation I've had with two clients now is uh, over Century Legion. One, why is he back so soon was, was in one email. We touched on that last week. I explained to the to the client exactly why we're bringing the horse back in, why we brought him in the way we did, and what our plans are with him. The other reason is, the other question is, why is he in Ohio? Well, it, it's quite simple, and, I, and maybe I haven't been clear, because truthfully, maybe I haven't been clear about why we chose Ohio for Century Legion. I don't believe, given his record and the way he raced his first four or five starts or six starts, that he's a Mohawk horse. He has to prove that to me. If he's not a Mohawk horse, there's only two paths forward for us currently with horses that are not Mohawk horses in Ontario. Sell them or move them. The reason being, I just think the racing is too difficult for the money they race for in London and Flamborough. And I don't know that they're going to get in regularly. We've been through this with Great Bet this summer. Raced him a little bit at Grand River. Raced him a little bit at, uh, well, it must have been Flamborough, Georgian, when Georgian was racing. And all we found was uh, he'd go on the track at 15 to 1. So that gave him no place to race, right? That was his class or classes. So he had nowhere to race. He was 12 to 1. He was getting beat up and he couldn't compete. Lo and behold, we moved the horse over to Northfield Park. He's 9 to 5. And I think he won three of his first five races over here. And then we sold him for what I would suspect is fair market dollar. That's the bat, That's the easiest path forward. Now, 
If we get him over to Northfield and or the Meadows and the horse race as well, he can always, of course, he can go back to Ontario. Just like, as I said, I took a blueprint that was a bit unorthodox, which was Time is on My Side's calendar last year, and applied it to other horses. If Century Legion comes over here and races in, at Christmas time or at the first of the year and does well, wins some races, and then, uh, or, or race at the Meadows, does well, and we can send him back over to Ontario, give him a little bit of a break, and now he's prepped and ready to go. We have had a look under the hood, we like what we see, the horse is going to move forward, and we're going to send him back over to where his jurisdictional stakes are. Now, the other side of that is we've looked under the hood. We maybe don't like what we've seen. I don't think that he's going to be a stake competitive horse, in which case we would move him right before stake season when people would be looking for a horse like that. Now, we can be wrong. We're only human. Maybe the horse, we sell him because we don't think he's competitive. He goes over there and he's very competitive. That happens. But I want that option to look under the hood before we're into stake season. So that is the path we've chosen with a number of horses this year. Him just being one of them. Country dancing is over at Mohawk now. For the same reason. Dancing by myself. The exact same reason. Different situation. Rather than coming south, they went north. Because I believe they do possess the abilities to be Mohawk horses. By all means, keep the emails coming though. It, it allows me to steer my dialogue, my, my communication with you in a way that is the most helpful. So I hope that that maybe lays the foundation of what we're trying to do for 2025, at least 2024 heading into 2025. Now, obviously we raced some horses last night. Um, three very, very different situations. So we're gonna talk about all of them. First one was I'm fancy like up a class in the eight hole. Now she was in the class below this from post seven at long odds the week before. Raced great, Aaron Merriman drove her great. She ended up second. Draws the eight hole up a class this week. That's not going to continue. Um, I said to Jason, you know, she does fit the downwards at 3,200 in uh, Dayton now. He says, well, Anthony, that's, that's the class that Chevron's bypassed. Said, that's a tough class. I said, well, there's not going to be any cakewalks for, for uh, I'm fancy like any longer. The stakes are over. She's got too many wins. There's not going to be easy racing out there for her. So she can either do in the classes that we have available to us, or we're going to have to sell her. Simple as that. Um, I wish things had worked out better in Yonkers, but they did not. Um, so we will race her in the numbers of 3,200. You know, get away eight. She six beat two lengths last night. Raced well, finished up well. I was happy with her. What are you going to do from post eight on the half mile track? So hopefully her next start will be actually in Dayton. And I do believe she's going to pace 53, 54. I think she is going to be that type of filly. She's growing up. She's maturing. She's smart. She understands her work. I like the film. I always have it, quite frankly. If I didn't, we wouldn't be talking about her right now. The second horse with Chevron's bypass. This is a bit of a trickier situation. This horse came out of Lexington race got her first start and has seemingly raced terrible since. Last night, weak in the turns, a little rickety in places. I thought she was a little right front, a little left hind. We'll draw our blood today. Quite frankly, if we don't find anything, it might benefit us just to give her three weeks off. I don't like what I saw last night. Uh, again, it was late enough for the card. We couldn't scope her. I like they scope her this morning, and if they see a lot this morning, that would have only um, that would have dissipated quite a bit from last night. So if we see plenty this morning, in regards to mucus, redness, sickness, blood, then it would have been uh, quite a bit higher last night. I, I I'm trying to run through the scenarios in my head that make sense, right? And to me, um, giving her some time off, I, I think, makes the most sense. What is this guy doing? Makes the most sense. Um, just because when I see a horse race like that, I have to, first thing is what happened? What's wrong? How can we fix it? There just seems to be a lot of question marks when it comes to this, uh, this mare. And quite frankly, if she's not good enough, just simply resell her. But I don't think that's the case at all. She just feels weak. That's not the horse that we bought. 
So where'd that horse go? How do we get her back? I think the easiest thing to do would just be hit the pause button for a few weeks on a couple of these horses, especially the ones that have been working hard. You know, I referenced Pelican Al early. This horse has been working very hard, doing his work well, as best as he can. Now we just have to give him the tools to do it better. Giving him a little time to relax, let his joints cool down, mature. The one thing we forget, because this is his second go-round of the burn in 2024, is that he's two. We forget that. I forget that sometimes, right? You just expect them to come forward and forward and forward. You forget that they are babies. So he's done his work well. We need him to do better. How can we help him do that? These are the questions I ask myself at night and in the morning on the way to the burn. The last Philly last night, the track was hard as a rock. Right line hard. Now the last, I believe, maybe not the last two times, but definitely two times now, she's drawn the inside one, two, and made a break in the first turn. That was very... I was very aware of that going into the first turn, and she was on the right line. She was a little bumpy in the corners. Now, Chris Lambs' horse is a better horse. I thought he shut his horse's air off in the first turn. He's making some awful noises. But he still, you know, this is a horse that I just beat with, well, I didn't just beat him, but I beat him with Ready for Landing, his last start. And then there's quite a birth, quite a difference between Ready for Landing and Love and Affection. <clears throat> I think she raced good on paper. I don't think she put in her best effort. I think she can be better and we need to help her do that. I think she might just need a little uh, time with Dr. Latessa, have a little look at her, see if there's anything new or if any of her old injuries were just maybe um, were just maybe compounded by the rock hard track in the rain. <clears throat> That's a possibility also. So I'm not too worried about love and affection. A nice second by a better horse quite frankly, and I thought she raced good. So we got all we were going to get last night, tonight. We look like, looks like money and all gas, no brakes. Uh, both, I believe, both picked a win, actually. Both in different places. Looks like money. We're waiting for her him to come forward. Although he's a good horse. He's not the looks like money from before. Just yet, anyway. Hopefully he's getting there. And then all gas, no brakes. Had some time off. He's relatively tight. Schooled in 58. Trained this week. James City School, good. So he's in a good place. Um, for tonight, the best place he can be, all things considered. So we'll see how he races tonight. Now I will end this with a with a, a plea uh, for all of you that send in checks or send your payments. Um, could you put in the memo line who it's for? You have to remember. Um, so Wendy is is off for the next week or so, and Amy was putting in um, payments last night on your accounts. And she would say, who's this person? Who's this person? They look the person up. Well, that person doesn't have a, isn't one of our clients because it's not the person. That's their wife or their partner. And what, or it could be a stable name. So when you send your payment, if it's by check, can you just put in the memo line who it's for? Like who the account, who this is being uh, sent for? Or if you send a payment, put it in some sort of, I know in, in PayPal you can put in a message line or whatever. Just put who it's for. It makes things a wee bit easier. Uh, it took about 25 minutes to find somebody's payment last night where it was supposed to be uh, deposited to. So, um, as I said, I'm almost to the barn right now. I am uh, looking forward to today. I have nine horses on my list to jog. Today I want to get a look at the horses that just came over from Ontario, Trevino on Green, My Wicked Heart, and Century Legion. We're going to break the babies today. Now we're not going to break, um, we're not going to break uh, Sterling Hanover um, or Leland Hanover. They had OCDs removed. Leland was castrated. He was originally. Um, so we're not going to be breaking that, those horses to harness till about December 1st, which is right on schedule. Uh, in, and in accordance with that, uh, I appreciate all the help from everybody. We had listed all available shale, shares of horses yesterday at noon. <clears throat> By 12.15, uh, Loc Locatelli's brother, Go Strong Hanover, was completely sold out. And I think by late afternoon, early evening, Sherry's uh, girl, Cherry's girl, was also all sold out. So thank you very much for that. That is the quickest we've ever sold an entire sale out ever. Um, within the first six hours of the buckets being available, the, the horses being available, 
all horses from the Harrisburg sale are now sold out. So, uh, continuing talks. I appreciate the emails with everybody about what we could do uh, for Black Friday coming up. The reason I say that is we do have some shares of horses that are lingering that I do want to move. What options do we have? What would people like to see? Now, I can't reduce share prices of horses from Lexington, London, Harrisburg. Harrisburg doesn't matter, but um, of those sales, that would be unwise. We just purchase the horses, and on the on the site is their at cost price. So it'd be hard to do that. Somebody would say, "Well, you know, you just give them fifty percent off." Okay, but to play devil's advocate, who 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 would pay for the other fifty percent? Fifty percent. So. I get it. I appreciate it. I appreciate all the emails. We'll come up with something um, for our clients, for you, for our clients for Black Friday. Um, again, I guess I'll close this video by saying uh, again how appreciative I am for everybody for Harrisburg, all the people that played a role, all our clients, um, all our clients that always are, are the backbone of the stable. All of you are, but behind the scenes there are always people that are always lingering. Um, and always questions coming in. I know I had a conversation last night with a friend of mine, Johnny, about Arson, where we're going to race him, why Yonkers wasn't in the, why Yonkers wasn't in the talks. The simple reason is that Arson could and will get around a half. If we put a roller burn, a big Murphy blind on the left, he'd probably get around a half, but not as well as he'd get around a bigger track or 5H, which sounds silly because he's not a big horse, but it really doesn't matter how big or small the horse is, it's how they corner, especially now that I see, I said, I'm fancy like the Yonkers, and she doesn't get around the track very well. It gives me pause with the number of the horses. I had mentioned time is on my side. If I send him to Yonkers and he doesn't get around the track, he's not staying at Yonkers very long, I can assure you of that. And when it comes to that difficult transition from three into four, yes, it is a difficult transition, but those two horses I just mentioned have been extremely good horses for us. They both pace sub 150 multiple times, and I think they're going to be good horses for us in 2025. But these are the same questions that all the owners of all the sophomores that are now graduating into that open level competition, those, these are the same questions they're all gonna face. So we'll all see together where they fit. I'm gonna do my best job to put them in the right place where they're gonna do the best for us. But you know what it is nice? It is nice having that problem. It is nice having to find classes for good horses that we've kept. So, with that, I'm going to let you go. There's going to be lots to talk about all week long. I think we've covered a number of things this morning. Most importantly, I'm eager to get to the barn and get things going again, get back at the barn full time. Work with both Jasons to make sure we have the right horses in Ohio. Work with Harry and Dominic to make sure we have the right horses in, in Ontario. And make sure that we can do the best we can on the track throughout the fall into the winter as we train down our babies. So with that, I'll let you go. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. Back to work. It's Monday. We'll talk to you all very soon. Take care.